Hello, everyone. Um, so thank you for being here um, today to talk about MFC. Um, so I'm Nicolas. I'm working uh, at Kedab. I know I'm the man between you and your drink, so I'll keep it short. Don't worry. Um, about myself, I'm a senior software engineer at Kedab. Uh, C++ developer since 2002. I'm living in Limoges in France, and we have a booth. We, you can go and talk to us. Uh, but the one thing you need to know is uh, somebody at some point asked in Kedab, who doesn't mind working in, on Windows? And I raised my hand. I should have known better. Um, so modernizing legacy MFC code. Uh, do you have MFC code in, right now? Yes. OK. Uh, actually, my title, I thought about my title, and I was thinking about this one. You got a big pile of MFC code, and now what? Well, you have actually four different ways to go forward. One is continue as is. Uh, maybe you don't have a lot of changes, a lot of features, bug fixing is low. Just continue as is. Abandon the code. Um, maybe there's another product by you or somebody else that is better, so just abandon. Cut the, cut the price. And then on, the, on your right, you have two options which are rewrite and migrate. And with those two options, you are getting rid of MFC. <clears throat> we are going to focus on the migration one. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about the rewrite, but our focus right now is the migration. And there are lots of reasons to move out uh, from MFC and to use Qt. The first one is MFC framework is on live support. Um, there's no new features. Uh, Microsoft is killing it. That's the uh, Qt is the, the contrary. It has a good support, a good communi community, so keep using it. And then there's different other reasons. Uh, depending where you are, you can use them. The UI feels over, very outdated. The application needs to run on multiple platforms use new UI paradigms, et cetera, et cetera. One important one is it's getting harder to find good MFC developers. Uh, but one thing important that you have to keep in mind is it's never the right time to move off MFC. There's always something else to do. So you have to build your case, and you have to come up with metrics to your manager saying, hey, look, it's, it's taking us two months to get a new feature. Or it's, this bug is taking us two weeks. So you have to make it happen. Now, a note about rewrite and migration. So I, I said I'll talk a bit more about this one. A rewrite, the rewrite is the most appealing option for us. Why? Because we start with a clean state. And um, we can remove all the technical debt. And we can even revisit and clean up all the requirements. And we can do better. Well, that's what we think. The problem with the rewrite is you need to finish the rewrite to have a product. And it's taking a long time, because you have the time to rewrite your whole software to be 100% feature complete. But you have also the testing time. And this time is going to be long because of a rewrite. And the second problem is you are losing years of knowledge with a rewrite. On the other hand, the migration, um, what you do is you keep the good and you replace the bad. And one interesting thing with MFC to Qt is you can do the migration incrementally. And that's really important. So it means smaller time to market. Um, two drawbacks. As a developer, you need to know both MFC and Qt, but you also need to know migration technique. I'm, I'm doing MFC migration, but I'm not an MFC expert. So MFC, you need to know MFC to be able to read the code, to understand the code, to understand the architecture. 
cute, you need to know how cute is, is working. And I expect all of you to know about cute. Migration technique is actually the most important thing. And you see a, a graph at the bottom. Um, it's not baked by any numbers. That's just my feeling. Uh, you see the rewrite time and the migration time depending on the line of code. I think for small code base, the rewrite is the, the faster solution. But usually at the point you are, the migration is more, is, is faster. And I don't have the exact number here. My gut feeling is saying between 30 to 60 uh, uh, thousand line of code. The focus on this talk is about migration technique, because I think you know about Qt, you may know about MSC. Be careful about one thing. Uh, when you do a migration, avoid doing migration and refactoring at the same time. It's going to increase the development, the development time, and it's going to make bug fixing harder. Is it coming from the migration or is it coming from the refactoring? So be really, really careful about that. If you want to do a, a, some refactoring, and you probably should, what you need to do is first wait for the migration to be done, or at least the migration of a module to be done. Or maybe what you can do if the module is isolated enough from the code, you can rewrite completely this part with good unit tests. And what, what do, you, do you need to do to migrate? You have four different areas you can migrate. If you want to move to another platform like Linux or Mac, you need to do four of them. The user interface is the tip of the iceberg. That's the most visible thing, but you are only touching, I don't know, 20, 30, maybe 50% of the code. The build system is completely orthogonal. Uh, you don't need to migrate the build system to migrate to Qt. Um, if you go on Mac, you, you will need to move out from MS Build. And I'm not going to start a framework about build system. Um, CMake is a good default. And then you, add, you have all the non-UX code using MFC. So using the C string, using um, C bitmap, C data, et cetera, et cetera. And the, this, this migration of a non-UX code is going to touch all your code base, so backend to UI. And finally, the Windows API. Windows API, usually the migration is really local. And you can do the migration using if dev, if needed. So for our ask, um, here we are going to focus on the user interface. So that's it. that's a, a small um, and a, a small introduction about migration. Now we are going to focus on the migration techniques and on the user interface. The first thing you need to do is to clean up your code base. That's really important. Before doing any steps, clean up your code base. Document your development setup. In KDAB, we have a lot of customers asking us about migration, and we, we are asking them to send us the code base so we can review it. And sometimes it takes us between one or two days to get the, the code base built. So that's a really long time. And I'm, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to drink a bit of water. <coughs> so, make, so make sure. Sorry about that. So make sure to document your development setup. That's really important. Remove dead code. You don't want to migrate code you don't use. <clears throat> then optionally, you can update your coding style, beautify your code. Okay. <clears throat> 
And for this, you have tools like Uncrustify, Uncrustify Clunk Format, etc. I'm really sorry, I'm losing my, my voice. <coughs> There's a subliminal message hidden. I don't know if you get it. Yes. Thank you. Clean up warnings. That's really, really important. When you build the code base and you have 20,000 warnings, you know that you won't look at the warnings anymore. The second thing is to integrate Qt into the build system. And I said that you can migrate the build system, but you can still use MS Build. And to do that, you, you can download the Qt visual add-ins on the, the Qt company website. And then you need to add support to Qt in your project. And um, I'm going to use a small example here. So that's um, a really silly application. Uh, just one dialog, it's just doing things. There's a timer moving the, the slider here. You can control it. You can see the mouse position. That's all MFC. OK. I'm going to integrate Qt inside this MFC application. And how to do that? Well, you can open the VCX project file. It's an XML file. And you need to add Qt VS underscore V301 keyword. You need to add the Qt property sheet, the Qt target, the Qt settings. Yes. Seems a bit, uh, it seems complex, isn't it? Um, what I usually do is to create an empty Qt project using the Qt visual add-ins, and then I'm copying all the XML tags related to Qt. And what you see is the whole diff of my project. So let's add, uh, I'm not going to do it live, sorry. Um, let's add Q to the project, and you can see I'm adding the keyword here, some property group for the property sheet, et cetera, et cetera. The diff is not that long. It's, uh, it's maybe uh, 20, 12, between 15 and 20 lines. But the interesting thing is now, If you go to properties, you have a Qt project settings here. And you can choose the Qt version and the, the module you, are, you need for your application. So you, you copied, uh, you created a new Qt Yes. So you, project. you do new project uh, Qt, Qt GUI application. Okay. I create that. I opened the V6 proj and I just copying the tags. And this is to keep the original build. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, no change in, into the application. It's still using MFC right now. It's just a way to integrate Qt inside MSP. Uh, my application is still the same. Ugly. One not about PCH. So PCH is pre-compiled headers. Um, MFC applications are usually using PCH. So you have uh, include stdifx.h usually in all C++ file. You need to do the same with the generated C++ file from Qt, meaning that the, the file generated by mock or RCC need to include this stdafix.h. Good news, mock supports, there's an option in mock, so you can add this, this include file. Bad news, RCC doesn't. So for RCC, what you need to do if you want, <coughs> if you want PCH, it's to include the generated 
file from RCC inside a C++ file. The easiest option is to remove PCH or to use another, another build tool uh, like CMake that can have this kind of thing. Oh, sorry. It's PCH. Okay, okay. So it's coming. Once you have a, a, a MS build Qt project, then you can integrate Qt Win Migrate inside your project. Qt Win Migrate is a library created by the trolls back then. I don't remember the, the year. It's a Qt solution, BSD license. And it contains only three classes. QMFC app is uh, an, uh, a class allowing you to merge the Qt and MFC event loops together. QWin host allows you to integrate a MSC widget inside a Qt one. And QWin widget is the contrary. So you integrate a Win, uh, sorry, a Qt widget inside an MFC window. So I'm, again, I'm doing it using Git. So I just, I'm just adding all those files. That's the whole Qt Win Migrate library. Uh, it's adding some filters, but it's not really important. What is important is in those two classes. Here, I need to re-implement the run method. Why? Because in the run method, I'm going to use QMFC app run this. And this is the point where I'm merging the Qt and MFC event loop. And you see the, the initialization is done here in the init instance. If I'm going back uh, to my small example, compiling it, it's taking a bit more time. You can ask my boss to, to buy me a faster laptop if you want. Running it's it. It's recording, so he will, he will hear it. <laughs> running it, uh, it's still the same ugly MFC uh, dialog, but this time I have Qt, the Qt event loop running. Okay. This Qt win migrate is really, really important because it allows you uh, to create what we call a mixed MFC Qt application. Uh, you have an application with half of the UI in MFC and half of the UI, of the UI in Qt. And the application, when you do the port, the migration, the application is almost 100% feature complete all the time. And that's really important. We've seen two main issues with uh, Qt Win Migrate. It's the drag and drop between MFC and Qt and the focus handling. Uh, both, you can work around them, but it's not that easy. So just know about those. And it allows you to have two different approaches to, to the migration. The bottom up, where you start migrating the small dialog and you go back to the main window. And obviously the top down, when you start from the main window and you go down to the sub dialog. The easiest one is actually the bottom up. Why? Because you start with a dialog with usually, uh, which is usually touching a small number of files or code. Uh, the hardest one is the top down when you start porting the main window before porting all the rest. 
And for whatever reason, all our customers are asking for the top down. Um, because that's the most visible. Or you can, uh, you can act actually mix and match. So you can have people starting from, from top down and over people starting from bottom up. One thing important here is to avoid nesting too many levels of QWIN host, QWIN widget. So you should avoid this kind of onions architecture with win host, with win widget. It's working. We've done that with five, six layers, but you have a lot of issues with focus handbook. Once you have done um, integrate Qt, integrate Qt, win migrate, then you are going to migrate the dialogues. And the first thing to do is to create new dialogues. Uh, when I'm talking about uh, MSC migration, I'm talking about widgets. I'm not talking about QML, because QML requires a lot of refactoring, so you can't do that uh, easily. So if I'm talking about widgets, I'm talking about UI file. So you need a way to migrate from the resource file, .rc, from MFC to the UI file. Um, it's easy. Uh, it's declarative. Um, it's not really hard to parse. It's a bit verbose, but it's doable. If you have two, three, four, ten dialogues, maybe you can do that by hand. If you have 200 dialogues, you don't want to do that by hand. And um, uh, what we have in, uh, in KDAB is we have a, a tool. Uh, it's named Qt, Knut. Sorry. Uh, I don't know exactly why. Again, it was before my time in KDAB. An IKEA stuff? It's not an IKEA product. Uh, actually, maybe, maybe that's... Maybe. So that's, uh, that's the RC file for, for our small demo here. And you can see you have the dialogue. It's, as I said, it's really easy to parse. And this, this uh, tool is taking the dialogue and creating a UI file. And that's a cute dialogue of the, of the MFC resource. Uh, it's not working because, obviously, it's just the UI file. Uh, for this particular example, it may be silly to write a parser for a RC file. Uh, if I'm taking a real world example, I don't want to port all those dialogues by hand. OK. So I need, I need something that can do that for me. So again. Automate UI file creation if you need to. Uh, if you have 10 dialogues, you don't need to. Yes, yes, internally in, in KDAB, yes. But what I want to show is you can create a parser. It's not that difficult if you need to. Uh, so that's, that's my application. Uh, did I check it out? No, not yet. That's my application. You see now I have a UI file. In my dialog header, what I do is to change from C dialog to Q dialog. Can you read the screen? That's OK. I'm just changing from C dialog to Q dialog. And I'm, if they think everything else, that doesn't compile yet. And that's also really important. You should always have something that compiles. And if you are putting something on the side because you don't have time to port it yet, if they fit, if def it with um, a tag like kdab need porting. Uh, 
Well, not Kedab, because you are not Kedab. Uh, whatever you want. On the source file, um, it's the Q dialog, and the rest is just a big if def. So there's not a lot of code changes. If I'm going back to my small application now, I'm compiling, you can see the UI file. Oh, and uh, also now you can see in the project some cute meta object compiler settings and uh, cute user interface setting if you want to change how UI see or I, how mock is called. And now that's a cute application. It doesn't do anything else yet because I didn't migrate the rest, but that's my UI file. So automate UI files creation. And then you need to port the rest, the, the whole block I put in comments. Uh, for the rest, you have two different things to port. The first one is uh, the, what we call the message map. The message map in, is in, in MFC is the way the dialogue is uh, responding to events. And actually, it's rather easy to port. There are some kernel cases, but usually, some parts are ported using Qt event handlers, and other parts are, using, are ported using Qt slots. So you can see on the WM paint, it means that there's a paint method in my class. You can port it using a paint event. Uh, left button down, it means that my dialog is responding to a left button of the mouse. You can port it using the mouse press event. Here I have an on button clicked. It means that whenever this button, so the id underscore button underscore had is clicked, this method is going to be called. So you create a, a slot or a function, and then you need to do the connection. Again, when you do a migration, try to automate as much as possible. And you can actually automate this kind of thing. And the second thing you need to, to do when porting the dialogue is to port the way the, the data are exchanged between the class and the dialogue on screen. Because with um, MFC, what you see, you have a, a class, a dialogue object, and you have the dialogue on the screen. And Actually, they are exchanging data, and there is a method named do data exchange that controls the way a class member is linked to a control in the dialog. And when you start the when you display the the dialog, the on init method on init dialog method is called just before the dialog is shown, and it's going to actually move the data from the dialog object to the dialog you see on the screen. So it's just an initialization of the controls. And then when you need to change data between the, the class to the dialog or the dialog to the class, you, you use update data. So update data false is going to exchange data from one side to the other, and update data true the other way around. So let's see how it looks in the code. So now I have a, a C tutorial dialog, that's a Q dialog. I'm removing the do data exchange because I don't need it uh, anymore. So I'm keeping the on init dialog, the show event dialog. I'll talk a bit more uh, about those two later. And then I'm Changing, you see the ifix underscore message. Those are used in the message map. So I'm changing that into a normal method here. Uh, same thing here. The on timer, it's going to be a timer event. 
the on left button down is going to use the mouse press event, etc., etc. And I'm removing all those data. Why? Because with Qt, we don't have this data exchange mechanism, so we don't need it. We can use the pointer to the widget directly. On the source code, so I'm connecting my um, slots, my signals with my slots. So re you remember the, where is the ma message map? We have a on button click, ID and button add, on button click, button add here. What I'm doing is to connect the add button to the on, on button click button add. And that's how you port the, the message map. And then you are going to port all the API to the Qt API. So here you, you have m underscore v slider bar, which is a member of the C dialog, the MFC dialog. I said you don't need those members anymore, so you can use directly the pointer inside your UI file. So I'm using m underscore UI, v slider bar. Uh, one not try to use the same name as the member name. It makes porting easier. Start timer. Uh, on paint, I remove it because we don't need it. Uh, it's just when the application is an icon here. The on button click, button add. When you, you click on the button, then you are going to change the counter so going from zero to one, one to two, et cetera, et cetera. Here you can say that it's changing the echo text and then calling update data to move my data from the, the C++ class to the control. Here I just need to change the text directly from the widget. Yes. Is that because uh, you don't have to change the text, but you have the automatic signal slot connection? Oh, I, I'm not using automatic signal slot connection. Um, I'm just reusing the same name as the MFC version. Um, same thing for the rest. And then you have a timer event, for example. So you have on timer here. Now it's a timer event. And you can see that I'm doing exactly the same thing. So instead of using the member of my class, I'm using the widgets directly. And same for the rest here. Uh, on left button down, you don't have uh, an event just for the left button. So you need to create the mouse press event and then to check. Is it the left button or the right button, et cetera, et cetera. There's one mechanism interesting with, uh, with this di data exchange is the on init dialog. So I said this on init dialog is called only when you show the dialog the first time. So it means that the initialization is deferred. It's not done during the constructor, but it's done just before you show the dialogue. Usually, you don't need this mechanism. You can bypass this and do the initialization directly in the constructor. In case you need this mechanism, what you can, can do is to use the show event. Oh, sorry. I've done it here. Even if I don't need it, it's just to show. So you can. what you can do is to re-implement show event, and the first time you call on any dialog. That's, that's how the MFC uh, is doing the initialization. In this particular case, I don't need to defer the initialization. I can do that directly in the constructor. 
and 80% or 90% of the case, you don't need this, this mechanism. So let's go back here. Let's see what we got. So that's the, the cute part of the dialog you've seen in MFC. And uh, you can see it's working as before. You can see the mouse move. Uh, I can click here. I can click on this one and the timer is not working anymore. I can click it again, it's working again. So that's the same thing in Qt, same dialog in Qt. One thing really, really, really important is that I try to minimize the code changes. And when you ask me about the own button, uh, the, the own, uh, where is, was it, the own here, that's because I'm trying to minimize the code changes. Yeah, but I'm not using it. You, you, you have the, the connect, uh, the connect is here for the button. And like before, you can automate part of it. I'm not saying that you can automate everything, but you can automate part of it. once you understand the, the mechanism for that part, migration. Uh, so that's, that's it for our small dialogues. Again, that's a really small dialogue. I just wanted to show you something. Real world examples are more complex. And you have more things in the resource RC5. You have menus, toolbars, shortcuts, assets, et cetera, et cetera. And like before, oh, I'm going back here. I said GNUT is used to um, extract UI file, but we are actually using it for everything. For example, if you have a menu like this, you don't want to do that by hand. Um, so what you, what you want to do is actually to ex, extract, uh, don't mind the UI, that's a developer tool. Uh, it's not perfect, but you take a menu and you want to create the code for the menu. And when, when you do that, make sure to have a way to be able to change the code. Why? Because your application, your old application, the MFC application may, may be living its own life with new features. And you need to, back, to port those new features to the Qt, your Qt application. So you need a way to be able to migrate, but you also need a way to update the migration. Another reason is at some point you think the transformation from MFC to Qt is like this. And then after 10 days, two, uh, three weeks, one month, you, you, you saw that you are forgetting something and you need to change the way the migration was done. So you need a way, and that's also an important, you need a way to change how you have migrated those resources. And for example, here I can, I can use another script and it's going to change the whole way the whole code created. So it's really important to migrate, to automate the migration, but it's also important to be able to kind of refactor the migration, to update the migration after the fact. And again, you need to automate everything. And finally, a note about control. So the, the migration I've done on the dialog, you've seen checkboxes, buttons, that's really small controls. Usually you have way more controls. So for all the simple controls like checkbox, buttons, 
just use the, the Qt widget directly. And I would go even further. If there are some behavior change in MFC, you can probably remove them and use the Qt widget directly without changing the behavior. Uh, we've done that for customers, and they, they didn't see that there was a small behavior change. Why? Because people accept, uh, expect the button to work like any other buttons. If you have a more complex control, um, usually it's using some existing MFC library, may, maybe Toolkit Pro, you, you may have heard about it. In this case, what you need to do is to create an, ab an abstraction level. You don't want to use Qt directly. You create a class which is going to use some Qt widget, and then you create the same be behavior and you try to have the same API as the MFC version. Why? Because it's going to make your migration easy. And once all the controls have been migrated, then you can think about refactoring. Uh, a small example of this, so that's, um, that's actually uh, the report from uh, Toolkit Pro here, you can see. Um, the first time we've seen that in an application, we thought, oh, it's just a table. It's easy. Just we can just use Qtable view, and we did. And then the customer asked us, but how can I create my tree view from your table? A tree view, what? And we didn't know about this, uh, this thing, and there wasn't a, a big thing saying that you have to drag and drop headers to create a tree view. So we had to go back to our <coughs> migrated code and then create the abstraction level, et cetera, et cetera it would have been easier to create the abstraction level from the start. So for every complex control, I would really advise to first create the abstraction level, uh, abstraction level, then have an API as close to the MFC one. And once all the controls are, have been migrated, then you can refactor and have a nicer API. And you can use some, some existing Qt library. And there's um, the Qt um, marketplace coming. So you'll, you can find a lot of different libraries existing. And an example here, and again, that's because of Toolkit Pro. They have, um, they have a library for doc widget, which is really advanced compared to the Qt doc widgets. And a friend of mine have ported I've used Qt doc widget in two different MFC migration, and every time he had to do some bug fixing, some new features on top of doc widget. So he created a new library, uh, K doc widgets. And that's, that's closer from the, the doc widgets you can see in MFC, where you, you have this. If you, are, if you are used to uh, Visual C++, you know this kind of thing. So you have uh, the button where you can show where you are going to drop. You can have multiple doc widgets on a floatable window, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we just released the first version yesterday, I think, and uh, the license is GPL and commercial. But beyond that, don't reinvent the wheel. Just look for an existing library. So be careful, find the right level of abstraction. And as before, try to automate as much as possible. And once you have the, the, you have the level of abstraction and the, an API close to the MFC one, you can automate that. And we have barely scratched the surface because there's the document view architecture. Uh, we've said document view, printing, threads, uh, and let's not talk about COM, OLE, ActiveX. There's a lot of multiple things we could talk about. Uh, it's just to give you an, in an introduction of migration technique for MFC. Quickly, conclusion, and you can go for your drink. 
Um, choose your migration strategy wisely. And that's really important that you think about it and you are prepared to defend it internally because selling a migration is really hard. Um, selling refactoring is really hard. You are, basing, you are basically going to spend days or months of, on something that doesn't add any new features. So you need to, to prepare it, to back it up with numbers. And don't, meet my, don't mix migration and refactoring. It's not always possible, but try to avoid that. Clean up the code. Clean up the warnings. Um, use the Qt MFC migration framework. And when you use that, you'll have a mixed MFC Qt application. If you have a mixed MFC Qt application, you can actually give it to your users as long as you know about the limitation of uh, focus handling and drag and drop, and it's working, but you can give it to, to your user. But don't lose sight of the big picture. The big picture is to remove MFC. And we've seen that with uh, customers starting the migration process and then stopping, and stopping at some point. Find the right level of abstraction, and that's really important to help you. Automate all things. Whatever you can automate, automate. And also try to limit code differences with, between MFC and Qt version. That's important also because uh, for bug fixing, so you can step on the MFC version, on the Qt version, and you can see the differences. And it's also really important if your MFC code base is live. So if you are adding new features, then you need to port them to the Qt version of your code. And that's it. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, I don't know if we have time. Thank you very much.